Today I'm going to show you guys how to configure an IPsec site-to-site -site VPN tunnel on a Unify router. I'm going to show you guys how to configure the phase one and two portion of the VPN tunnel utilizing a virtual tunnel interface, which is essentially a more flexible VPN option that allows you to do stuff like dynamic routing protocols like OSPF and BGP across it, or just static routing if you'd rather do that, which is what we're going to do in this video. I'm also going to show you how to configure the firewall policy to allow IPsec to be established between your remote device and your Unify router. We're also going to configure routing and I'm also going to show you how you can troubleshoot establishing an IPsec tunnel VPN via the CLI in the event you run into any issues. And the good news is this isn't very complicated to set up. It's basically a matching game. As long as you match with the configuration on both sides of your tunnel, you're going to be good to go. But without further ado, let's actually go ahead and get into this because like you guys, I'm busy. It's date night with your mom and it's a fish night, if you know what I mean. You're a sick motherfucker. Let's get into it. All right, so I'm gonna show you what my lab looks like real quick so you can follow along and uh, understand what we're doing. So over here, we've got my lab and we've got my UDM Pro on the left and my PFSense firewall on the right. The physical connection between these guys is gonna be this one here, this 10.1.100.1 and 254 respectively. Now, in your case, it could be something totally different. It's gonna be that essentially that first interface that connects these guys together. So this could be your WAN IP address of your device and this might be the WAN IP address of the device that you're trying to connect to with your tunnel. It just depends on your setup. Uh, and we're gonna create a virtual tunnel interface between these two guys, which is represented in this green line here. And we're gonna assign these IPs, this 169.254.3.1 and two. Now you can use whatever subnet you want, just make sure it doesn't overlap with your current setup. And essentially the only two networks that are gonna cross this tunnel interface for this setup is gonna be this one over here on the Unify side, the 10.3.10.0 network and this 10.7.7.1 loopback address on the PFSense and that's just because that's all I felt like setting up. Uh, so essentially, if this network wants to talk to this guy, they're going to have to go across the VPN tunnel. Uh, now you can add additional networks uh, to traverse your VPN if you want, but that's up to you and I'll show you how to do all that now. All right, so now that we know what the lab looks like, let's go ahead and actually jump into the Unify router and actually configure this thing. So I'm going to navigate over and log into my UDM Pro. Uh, you're obviously, your dashboard might look a little bit different depending on your version. Uh, this is my Unify OS version over here, along with the Network Appliance OS. So depending on what yours is, it might look just slightly different. But regardless, we're going to go to the settings down here and we're going to go to VPN. Actually, I lied. First, we need to actually uh, configure the firewall policy to allow IPsec between the two devices. We're essentially going to need to allow ports 500 and 4500 between the devices. So between the device you want to set your VPN up on and the end device. So I will go to policy engine. Yours might just be firewall or policy or something like that. I can't remember what it is. Wherever you configure your policies, depending on the version. And uh, for me, my interfaces are going to be on this lab zone here. So essentially it would be lab to lab for me. And I would be essentially allowing ports 500 and 4500 between the guys. In this case, since it's just a lab, I have a wide open firewall rule here that allows anything IPv4 related, any protocol with the source and destination zone being lab, which is essentially the zone that both these interfaces are gonna be connected to, the Unify and the PFSense, they're both on the lab zone, so they will be able to form that firewall. Now you can restrict yours if you want, you would just be allowing ports 500 and 4500, but in this case, I just left it wide open. And from there, now we can actually go ahead and configure the VPN. So we will navigate to VPN, site to site VPN, and you should be here. This is gonna be the interface that it sets you up with to create your first VPN tunnel if you don't already have some. So I am here, I'm gonna be using IPsec and I will just name this uh, PF underscore Unify. And that's just to represent the fact that this VPN tunnel is between my PFSense and my Unify. Now this pre-shared key, uh, I'll just use this pre-shared key for now. Uh, this is gonna to have to match up with the other side. So if you're coordinating with somebody else, make sure they have the same uh, pre-shared key. And now for your local IP, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and select the interface that's gonna be connecting between these two devices. In my case, it's gonna be my 10.1.100.1 interface. So I'm gonna actually have to manually enter this since it tries to assign your WAN IP address to this, which isn't gonna be the case for me. So 10.1.100.1. And then from here, the remote IP for me is gonna be 10.1.100.254. Just like this lab is set up here, this is gonna be my local and this will be the remote IPs. And from here, I'm gonna keep this as a route-based VPN. That's what you're gonna to wanna to do too. And we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and check this tunnel IP selection here and configure those tunnel IP addresses. So in my case, it's gonna be that 169.254.3.1 and two interfaces. So in this case, the Unify is gonna get 
and the net mask is going to be a slash 30. Now the remote network. So these are going to be the networks that you're going to be trying to reach on the other side of the VPN tunnel. So whatever's sitting on the remote side of that firewall or whatever it is, you're going to be terminating your VPN connection at whatever networks are going to be over there. You're going to want to enter those here so that your unified device knows that in order to get to those networks or that's go across the tunnel. Now you can actually use dynamic and then configure OSPF. I'm not going to do that in this video. It'll be in a follow on video for now. We're just going to be using static. So essentially the only network I'm going to want to get to in my case uh, over the VPN tunnel is this 10.7.7.1 network. So I am going to put this 10.7.7.1 network and I'll do slash 32 and I will add it. So essentially if I want to get over to that remote network, which is going to be 10.7.7.1 slash 32, I will be going across the tunnel. Now we're going to go ahead and select manual. We're not going to do auto. And I am going to go ahead and select Ike V2, so Ike version 2. And then now we're going to go ahead and configure our phase one portion of our tunnel here, which is going to be this Ike portion. So we're going to use AES 128. Now you can use 192 or 256. However, no, this is going to uh, somewhat potentially impact performance in terms of speed and all that. If this is just a lab, uh, nothing too crazy that requires higher security, I would just leave it on AES 128. And we will switch the SHA hash to SHA 256. Uh, which is just about standard. So essentially AES-128 is the actual encryption algorithm we're going to be using for encrypting the data. In this case, the phase one tunnel data, which is essentially just the control traffic. And we're going to be hashing with SHA-256, which essentially just randomizes the data with a specific math function. And both devices will agree upon whatever that is. We'll leave the Diffie-Hellman group as 14 and the lifetime as 28. 800. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to the phase two portion of the IPsec tunnel, which is ESP. And we will go ahead and leave encryption AES-128. Now, of course, just like phase one, you can increase this if you want more security. However, be aware it's going to impact performance potentially. Uh, and then we're going to use SHA-256 hash here as well. We'll leave Diffie-Hellman group as 14 and lifetime is 3600 for this. Now, perfect forward secrecy. So PFS is essentially the ability to allow uh, the devices that are creating the VPN tunnel to randomly generate different encryption keys essentially for each session that the VPN tunnel is established. And this is essentially used just in case hackers do actually somehow get that encryption key that you used in some past data. They can't use that to then decrypt new data. Uh, so essentially it's, it's something that's pretty nice to have. I have seen issues where this does uh, mess with some uh, VPN devices. Um, depending on how well they support it and depending on the vendors that are interacting with each other. Like let's say you're using Unify and PFSense or Unify and Cisco. Uh, so you can try it, just make sure both devices do support it. And if you have issues, you might want to check your logs uh, to see if this is potentially impacting things. For now, I'm going to leave it checked and we'll go down. So log authentication, I'm going to uncheck auto and I will leave it to tell itself to use that 10.1.100.1 IP address to identify itself because that is the IP address that's going to be used to establish the VPN tunnel with my PFSense. Now, if you're sitting behind a NAT device, so essentially let's say your device is sitting behind your ISP router, which uses a public IP address and essentially any of your stuff that sits behind it is natted across it, you're gonna to wanna to actually use that public IP address because you're gonna represent yourself as that public IP address when you establish that VPN connection. In this case, I'm not doing any NAT. It's just gonna be this interface here, just like my lab diagram, which you guys are probably sick of seeing. This, he's gonna be using this IP address to represent himself saying, hey, I'm here. And uh, he's gonna be using this IP address over here to ensure that he's talking to the right person at least in the beginning to establish the tunnel. So remote authentication ID, you can leave it as auto. If not, you can manually enter that IP. So 10.1.100.254, which is what I will do in this case. And then from here, we'll leave MTU as default and route distance as default as well. And we will click add. And now if I go over to my PFSense and look at the configuration, I'm not gonna go crazy into this because this is not part of the scope, but I've actually got it set up over here. So I've got um, my Ike phase one portion of my PFSense essentially I will be connecting to this 10.1.100.1, which is the Unify router. And uh, if we go into it, and we can see that the majority of our stuff is uh, matching up over here. Well, actually all of it does. The remote gateway is gonna be the Unify's uh, local IP address essentially, which is that 10.1.100.1. My identifier is gonna be my IP address for the PFSense, which is 10.1.100.254. They're gonna be using, the Unify is gonna be using the .1. I will switch the key because it did change to match what the Unify router is. And you can see here for phase one, we're using AES-128, SHA-256, Diffie Helmet Group 1400, lifetime's the same. And we'll go down and press save. I'll apply my changes just to apply that new password. 
And then if you look at my phase two, you can also see that this all matches up. I've got the mode set to routed VTI. Uh, this is going to be that tunnel IP address assignment for the, each of the devices, AES-128, SHA-256, Diffie Helmet Group, all that good stuff. So all this matches up on the PS Sense, which means that this tunnel should be getting established. Let's actually check it out on the Unify router. So I'll go back to VPN, site to site, and it looks like it is online. So we have established an IPsec tunnel. Now from here, if I wanted to add any additional routes, let's say on my lab here, I'm only actually connecting to uh, these two networks, right? But let's say I add another network over here, maybe 10.8.8.1 on the PFSense that I want to be able to reach. I would just go back in here and I would add another network here. So I would just add this under remote network static and I would just add 10.8.8.1. And essentially that's saying, hey, if you want to get over there to 10.8.8.1, you're going to go across this IPsec tunnel. Now, ensure you do the same thing on your remote device that you're connecting to via VPN. You might have to set up a static route, whatever it is that you're setting up on that side saying, hey, if I want to reach the devices on the other side of the Unify router. So essentially, if the PFSense wants to reach the devices over here, he needs to set up a static route to ensure that he takes the next hop of the VPN tunnel IP address to get over here. But that's about it. That's how you set up an IPsec tunnel on Unify router. All right, so now that my VPN tunnel is established, I actually want to try and ping across the tunnel and verify that the traffic is actually crossing the tunnel. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to use my PFSense and I'm going to run the trace route tool to verify that my traffic is going from the loopback across the tunnel to the actual laptop, which is on that 10.3 network. It's 10.3.10.2. So I'm going to try and ping 10.3.10.2. I'm going to leave it IPv4 in my case. My source address is going to be that loopback IP address, which is, is going to be this IP address here, which should actually go across this tunnel over to here. So let's see. And let's go ahead and do a trace route. Cool. So you can see here we hit 169.254.3.1, which is that interface, the tunnel interface of the Unify router. And then we go down to 10.3.10.2, which is where my laptop is over here. So we did verify that uh, we are crossing the tunnel uh, to get over to the other side. Um, and that's it. That's basically how you would do it. You know, you might use PowerShell. Uh, this won't work in my case because I'm not on the same network with this computer that I'm on here, but I would just do trace route. So I don't know, 10.3.10. Or nope, 10.7.7.1. And this isn't going to work for me, but that's what you would do in Windows. I can do the same with a Unify router. You can actually go into your CLI and use trace route as well. Uh, whatever the case is, um, that's it. That's how you would uh, test it. Now I am going to show you how to do some troubleshooting and looking at logs just in case you have any issues when you do try to establish the VPN tunnel because I ran into some issues when I was trying to do this with Unify and what you probably noticed is that the uh, GUI doesn't really give you any sort of status indication other than this online whether or not something is wrong. Uh, if you go into it, it'll just say offline. It won't even tell you that phase one or two is down. It'll just say offline and it makes it very difficult to troubleshoot when you do have issues. Now you can see some better logging via the CLI and let's go ahead and check that out. So you'll want to SSH into your Unify device with PuTTY or with whatever terminal session you want to use. I have PowerShell is another option. I am already SSH into my device, so I will increase the font size real quick. All right, that's a little bit better. So let's say we have some issues with the password for the uh, VPN tunnel, right? We'll go ahead and go into the VPN itself. We'll change the password a little bit here, right? And we'll press apply changes. So now the tunnel should actually reset and try to reestablish itself and it's not actually going to be able to connect. And we want to find out why it's not connecting, but we can't look at the GUI. One thing we can do is run this command here, tail dash F bar log Damien log, and then we're going to grep for Ike. So essentially we are going to be tailing a file, which is essentially looking at a log file live and seeing any additional updates that might come in. And we're going to be looking for messages that are related to Ike, which is phase one of the IPsec tunnel. And when we do that here, you can see we're already getting some output for it. And we'll just stop it here. And uh, one of the things you can see here is we're trying to establish an Ike tunnel and uh, we're getting an auth failed, meaning something's not working with the authentication itself. Ike phase one, we're using pre-shared key, uh, meaning the key is probably wrong. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and update that. So I'll go back over here and I will grab that same password. Here we go. And I will apply that to my VPN tunnel on the Unify side and wait for it to reestablish. So let's go ahead and go here. We're still getting an off fail. Let's wait for the actual settings to apply and update. And we should see, yep, there we go. See, it's established. So we actually did establish the VPN tunnel. And now if we run IPsec status, 
we can see that our tunnel is actually established and we are good to go as of 10 seconds ago. So if I pull that back up and I go back into the VPN site to site, we can see that my tunnel is uh, online. Uh, so those are some ways that you can troubleshoot your VPN tunnel. Now you're gonna get other log messages potentially. There might be one where it shows that you have this proposal configured. So let's say you look at your VPN tunnel and it's saying you're proposing AES-128 and SHA-256 and you might see that you've received a different proposal. Let's say AES-256, SHA-256. That means your configuration isn't matching up. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and change that. And that's basically how you would troubleshoot your VPN tunnel via the CLI to get your stuff going. Uh, and that's all I got for you. But anyways, guys, that's how you configure an IPsec VPN tunnel and how you troubleshoot it via the CLI, as well as verify that you actually are seeing traffic go across the tunnel, utilizing those trace route and ping commands. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them down below. I appreciate you guys' support. Thank you for helping me hit 1K subscribers. I will be announcing my giveaway in my follow-up video. I appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.